Welcome back. We're going to have an extended conversation now on the Caribbean Premier League, which is now in full swing here in Trinidad and Tobago. We're entering the end of the first week of the competition. And of course, it's going to be a much shorter competition this time around because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Just three weeks this tournament. So we have another two weeks after this weekend slate of matches. But what a start for the Trinbago Knight Riders in this tournament. They beat the Guyana Amazon Warriors quite well in that first match. And then last night, they beat the Jamaica Talawas. Both times, Sunil Narayan leading with both bat and ball. Let's bring in Philo Wallace, uh, the former West Indies and Barbados batsman, to get some more in-depth analysis on the CPL 2020. Phil, you've been following it from England. What have you made of the first week of the CPL? Well, the first week of the CPL, thank you, Ryan, again, for having me on your program. The first Always week of the my CPL. pleasure. Thanks a lot for coming. Minus, yeah, thank you. It's a pleasure. Minus the, the, the spectators, uh, it's gone okay. Uh, I've not, uh, too, obviously, we thought spectators is not that same spectacular kind of thing. But for the players to be out there playing cricket and the authorities are uh, uh, obviously putting all the protocols in place, that is the COVID 19 protocols, I would say that for the first week, it's gone well. I, I was making the comment this morning that many of the players who haven't played for three, four months don't look too rusty to me. No, it's all cricket. If, if you know what you're doing, it's just about getting <laughs> in the nets and practicing. <laughs> and the key the key is being fit. Once you stay fit and you get back into your, your various disciplines, batting, bowling, keeping, you know, you, you will find that it just takes a couple of days and you're back into it. And it's good to see that the players obviously still have that high intensity level uh, at the start of the competition. Hey, you don't win the tournament in just one week, fellow, but uh, TKR looks pretty good. They look the best team in the first week. Yeah, but TKR is a well, well oil organization, you know, and when you look at it, they have they take all the boxes to, to continue to uh, to do well in the CPL. I commended the Barbados Trinidad last year, but obviously uh, TKR are going to come harder <laughs> this year. Uh, Pollard is uh, is not a, a slouch as a, as a T20 cricket, he's not a slouch as a captain. Uh, and this, uh, this CPL will also help him as well to develop more leadership skills and be more tactical. So they've started well under his leadership, and obviously he'll be looking to, to, to continue in that vein. Look, I'm not going to get carried away with your words, Philo Wallace, because I saw what happened to the Guyana Amazon Warriors last season. Uh, the, Guyana Warri the Guyana Amazon Warriors was do motoring along so well throughout the tournament, unbeaten up until the final, and the one match that mattered, they didn't win. Uh, but they've had a tough start to this, to this tournament. Do you think that... And, I'm, and I mean this genuinely as a question, you know, you, you've reached five finals, you can get it. Is it that they've just gotten so exhausted, so tired, always being the bridesmaid, never the bride? Well, I think that the, um, the guy that was our Warriors are a good T20 side, but obviously they don't finish well. Uh, they're very competitive. You cannot underestimate them at all. Uh, and the quality of the, the, the players uh, obviously will stand out. But when it comes to that final hurdle, they just need to have a bit more, a bit more spunk uh, they, they, they lose their spunk, they lose their shape, maybe they also lose their focus. And then we have this thing called nerves. You know, nerves sometimes set in, and obviously they don't really cross the finishing line as they would want to if their hands raised. They always cross the finishing line second. <laughs> they'll, they'll be recognized <laughs> for coming second more often than not. <laughs> uh, when you look at the overall uh, quality of the competition amid a COVID-19 pandemic, just to have this competition on is a big success in any way, but what have you made of, uh, you know, not just on the field of play, but having everything off it? I mean, as a viewer, which everybody has to be because nobody's allowed in the stands, what do you make of it? Well, it's different. Obviously, the CPL has, has done their best along with the government of, of Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, from the outset, they said that they're going to follow the protocols that were established here when West Indies came up to England. And obviously, those protocols seem to have been followed and, and, and are working. It's just sad that no spectators are, are involved, but we know there's television and people will have to sit at home and have their, their, their libations and other things at home and celebrate their teams at home rather than be in the stands. But so far, I think it, it, it's good. Uh, thanks to the government of Trinidad and, and Tobago for allowing the, the CPL to, to obviously participate in that country. And we know that there's been a, a, some outbreak, but I, I do hope that they will try to stem the outbreak and, 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 and allay the fears of people in Trinidad and Tobago and also those players as well. Certainly. You know, uh, as I promised, I won't try to get too much ahead of myself here, but Sinel Narayan has had a very good start to the tournament. Uh, he was such a key player for the West Indies team. Uh, what can, you know, a really good, strong CPL do for this boy's career, fellow? 
I think Maxinello Wright has come on leaps and bounds in his cricket. I think he's one of the players that you can take a lot from in re relation to working at this game. Yes, there was a COVID pand there's a COVID pandemic. They haven't been playing cricket for a very long time, but he seems to have been doing a lot of work behind the scenes, maybe at home and stuff like that, and they're now seeing the, the, the rewards of his hard work. I think a strong CPL will, will put him in good standing, actually, to, to be selected in the West Indies T20 squad. Unfortunately, the T20 World Cup that was supposed to be in Australia this year, that's been postponed. And that'll be in, in India, I think it would be. So it, it'll put him in, in, good, in good standing to be selected uh, for West Indies cricket. But again, it's about Sunil Narang's mind and his attitude and, and, he, and the want to represent uh, West Indies. But, but follow that to him, you would expect him to say, yes, I'm going to come and play for West Indies in the T20 tournament. And I would expect that from him because he, he's, he's, he'll be the, with a leader in Polar that he knows and trusts. I'm just interested, as you mentioned, the T20 World Cup, yes, you mentioned postponed to possibly 2021 in India. We have some uh, quite uh, aging cricketers in our West Indies men's T20. Is that of a concern to you? Because many of those CPL stars uh, are in that West Indies team. Do you think, I'm asking, they'll have the fuel uh, to continue getting to 2021 at that World Cup? Well, rare fitness will be the key. And then motivation, how motivated are those senior players to play in an international T20 competition? It's a World Cup. So you're going to play against the best T20 players in the world. So the intensity is going to be higher than an IPL or even a CPL. So it all comes down to the fitness of those players and they know who they are. And if they're really motivated and up to, to doing the business at a World Cup for Cricket West Indies. If you don't mind me asking this off-field question, uh, you know, when it comes to the CPL, this week it emerged that the CPL owes uh, Cricket West Indies $1.4 million US dollars, that is, uh, in developmental fees, that is for the period 2015 through to 2018. Uh, what have you made of the CPL, uh, not just its finances, but its workings off the field of play? Has that been good for West Indies cricket? And I'll get to my second question right after you, because there's a follow-up question to this, a very important one as well. Well, Rand, the normal saying is, you owe, you owe, off the work, you go. So if the CPL owes Cricket West Indies $1.4 million, I think they should try their, their best uh, to try and repay that, that money. It's not, a, it's not a small amount of money. It's a large sum of money over a long period of time as well. So obviously from, on, from somebody's viewpoint, uh, it was an oversight or maybe it wasn't uh, sent to, the messages weren't sent in time to say, well, look, this is what you own. You need to start paying. So now that it's, it's crunch time where there's no international cricket, there's not a lot, a lot of money coming in you realize, hey, CPL owes some money, so we need to, to, to try and get it from them now. And now they're trying. There's a COVID-19 pandemic. So CPL, I don't know how much revenue they're going to generate from this year, but they obviously they're going to, to find, uh, you know, they're going to find difficulty in repaying that $1.4 million unless Cricket West Indies and CPL sit down and try to come up with a nice payment plan that will benefit both parties. Well, that is exactly what CEO Johnny Grave had to say, that they're working out a payment plan. But here's another interesting one for you. The Trinidad and Tobago Cricket Board President, Azim Basarat, revealed in an interview in, here in Trinidad this week that the CPL actually said during its conversations, its discussions, its negotiations way back when, uh, that they won't tap into the, the corporate sponsorship resources of the region, but would rather go to places like India, where Hero is at, and, and, and China, where Vivo is at, um, to get sponsorship instead. Uh, the TTCB president was saying that uh, that hasn't been the case. In fact, you, you look at the number of, of corporate sponsors that have come on board. You just look at the T-shirts of all of these franchise teams and you'll see Carib and, and radio stations and everything. Uh, that has been what he seems to be a, a real disappointment to the TTCB president. Is that disappointing to you as well? Well, it's not really disappointing to me because if the CPL could go to get local sponsorship, it's sad that the Trinidad and Tobago Cricket Board can't get sponsorship or even West Indies Cricket Board can't get local sponsorship. I know Sandals plays a massive role now in, in Cricket West Indies sponsorship. So it's just sad that the Trinidad and Tobago Cricket Board has been resting on their laurels. And it, I'm happy that uh, Mr. Bazaraf has had the, 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 the ability or the strength to come out and say these things because at the end of the day, he's the president of Trinidad and Tobago Cricket Board. So he should also be looking at where he can strengthen Trinidad and Tobago Cricket Board in relation to corporate, to corporate sponsorship and try to obviously get some more coffers in to Trinidad's cricket where you can see more development happening because that is only the, that's the only reason, the only way cricket is going to develop is if you have the finances. So that's why West Indies Cricket Board obviously is pushing CPL because a lot of the CPL finances will be handed down to the regional boards to help them with their developmental programs. Barbados has a good setup, Jamaica, Guyana, Trinidad and Tobago, but more finances, the Liberty and River Islands need to catch up. So more finances 
to help these other territories and the present territories, obviously, to improve the developmental programs. I have a googly to throw at you, Philip Wallace. If you were playing right now, which franchise would you like to play for? My home John's beat first. I have to represent Barbados. <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> it's franchise but, uh, cricket, you, though. <laughs> yeah, but I, you know, I, I think I'd be welcome in any franchise. But my home John's beat first. You know, obviously, you want to play for your home franchise uh, to really show the world what talent is there in Barbados. But if Barbados wouldn't take me, then I would have to come to Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> I'd continue to do the good work that, that is there. I think TKR has done a fantastic job. I think Queen's Park Cricket Club as well. And really, you know, they have a lot of uh, players within that, that setup. And you have to commend those two organizations for seeing the foresight of development and putting the right people in the right places to develop the young, talented cricketers. Any regrets that you weren't born a little bit later to play T20 cricket? No, I would not have had a son then. <laughs> <laughs> so I have no regrets at all. You know, I'm in a good space at, at the moment. And, and I feel good about myself. I'm happy that I can comment on cricket. And, and I hope that cricket continues to grow and, and the players recognize their responsibility. And when the floodgates do open, let's hope that the people do flood back to the stadiums. You're always happy to comment on cricket and we're always happy that you give us the chance uh, uh, to interview you. Phil, we really appreciate you joining us today. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Definitely. We'll be right back.